Well, to sum up that series, I think you'd have to just say that South Africa totally outplayed the West Indies. They won one, one ODI um, up in Port Elizabeth, which was a little bit of a moral booster for them. But when they lost it, the last one, I think it does pretty much put them back where they were after the first three. What they, that should have taught them, though, the one that they won, although it wasn't the strongest South African team, is that they are capable. They, if they buckle down and play their best cricket, they certainly can compete with the best teams around. And as we know, in the shorter form of the game, it's just a matter of who plays well on the day. So they should still look positively at that and think that they have a chance going into the World Cup. No, I don't think so. He's a young man. It's the first time he's captain in any, any form of cricket. I, I am not even aware of him captaining when he he played in Barbados. Possibly captain at schoolboy level, I don't know. But this is early days. It's pretty difficult to judge anyone on just one series what he has done. And of course, he didn't have the strongest of teams to, to captain. You know, you can always pick holes in, in different things that captains do in a one-day international, but... Sometimes you have to captain on instinct more than what the custom is is always thought to be. You know, you are out there in the field. You have some senior players around you to give you some advice and help. But sometimes you just have to go with instinct. And I wouldn't want to really judge him on one series. You know, he has a lot of cricket ahead of him. I think after the first three, three games, he looked very down. So it would have helped him to win the Western is won the fourth game. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Well, if everyone is fit and available, you know, if Chris Gale comes comes back in the form, you know, they they should have a reason to be back in the lineup. Darren Bravo will come back into the team. He wasn't available at all for South Africa for any form of cricket down there. He's coming back into the World Cup squad. If he comes back and he's batting well, I don't know how much cricket he has been playing while he has been away. But if he's batting well, if Chris Gale does well, Marlon Summers we know is in is in very good form. You know, they have a fair amount of batting there. Where I think their struggle is going to be in the bowling department on those hard Australian pitches. You know, Timar Roach is coming back into the team. He was in good form before he got injured. Whether he's going to be able to stay fit throughout the World Cup is another matter. But with Timar Roach coming back into the team, that will help. Missing the Ryan, I don't think we let the West Indies. That's a big bullet for them to be missing out on. But I think the batting is fairly strong. And as we saw in South Africa, I think they chose to chase more, more times than that. And I think that might be the method again in, South, in Australia for the World Cup. Well, it seems as if he is convinced that he won't be selected for, for Test cricket again for the West Indies. So if that is the case, why not? You know, there's no point hanging around, hoping and waiting when signals seem to tell that you won't be selected for the Test team again. So just have that I think is again his decision. He has weighed up the situation. He knows exactly what his his future holds for him, and so he has decided to go away from Test match cricket. He hasn't been selected anyway, so I don't think it's a big decision for him.